It is time once again for the unbiased UFO report. Stetson John Hudson comes on in to break it all down with the latest in UFO news. And we're going to start off with little Tommy DeLong. He makes another appearance as he tries to rebuild his grandiose idea of the To the Stars Academy, this time doing an interview with Mashable. What happened there? Well, so uh, well. First off, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, so it, this is this is actually a pretty trippy um, uh, setup in, in multiple ways because um, first off, you have Tom talking in a very casual way. He appears to just be like sitting on the beach or something with his phone and an earpiece in. It, it's very casual, and um, and and you know, he actually he he he. He says some interesting things, you know. I mean, he he does definitely try to recover, you know, some of his uh, credibility and so forth. And let's face it, if he really is going to continue the media thing, he doesn't have a choice, right? Um, but one of the things he said that really caught me off that I thought was interesting, I should say, is that he specifically said that the he said the he said that he doesn't, uh, he, you know, be, we we used to say I don't look at these as ET. He said intelligence, intelligence is manipulating electromagnetics, gravity, time, and consciousness. I look at these as displacement craft coming from a parallel reality. And that is a really crazy thought. And that was one of the things he said. And this is new for him. This is something he's been saying. He actually gave a really good analogy uh, interview um, he did recently where he said it's very much like how a submarine displaces water, that these objects might displace time or might displace, you know, uh, a reality. So, so this is not a new thing for him to say, but he did kind of, you know, a wax poetic in a way, um, you know, uh, talking about it. But what was really interesting is that the way they edited it, because what they did is they took his interview, and they cut up in sections, and in between those sections, they inserted um, debunkers, essentially. Um, they had several scientists on, and they had um, Mick West in there. And so basically, you'd have Tom, you know, uh, talk, you know, you a little further out onto the cliff, and then they would cut to some, you know, scientists going, well, you know, it's all very interesting, but until we have some hard data we can look at in the lab, most of my comrades, you know, comrades, sorry, most of my, m most of my, um, uh, you know, fellow workers basically say, look, until you have data that I can look at in a lab, don't bother me with this, right? Sightings aren't useful in a laboratory. And so, so he would say that, and then they would cut back to Tom, talking about some aspect of the phenomenon. And so it's this weird kind of schizophrenic back and forth um, uh, pr presentation of it. But all in all, I, Tom doesn't come out all that bad. You know, either way, though, I mean, is he trying to save face here by doing this after the embarrassment of the TSA? Well, well, wouldn't you? I mean, I mean, the thing is, is that fundamentally... He still believes in this stuff, you know, and like I was listening to a, a panel that, that you were on um, a while ago um, with it, that um, uh, Bob McGuire was on and Bob McGuire said something really, really well and really pertinent. And that was that, you know, as soon as those WikiLeaks articles got released, as soon as it was discovered that Tom was talking as freely as he did about who he was talking to, giving names to people as freely as he did in open email, he became a piranha. No one would talk to him after that. He would become it, like, it, you know, just like more than more than radioactive, right? Mm -hmm. And and he's talked about how crushed he was from that, you know. And so, but he does believe he is. He really does this for his own personal passion. And so, I don't think he has any choice but to try to recover, especially if he's going to continue to try to build the media side of his business. And we know he is working on at least one movie. I just think that, you know, I, I don't wish him any ill will or anything like that, but he's one of those guys, man, that I just wish would go away. You know, I mean, it's it's nothing against him. I don't believe the TTSA narrative. I don't believe the, the whole media, you know, narrative that they were controlling who could talk to the members. I don't believe a lot of that. I don't believe he set up the TTSA at all, I think he was he was uh, brought in to be a patsy on that, and I don't know. I want to go back to liking Tom DeLong, the musician. Okay, I really liked Blink One Eighty Two. That's the way I want to remember him. 
You know, not that he's dead or anything like that. But no, I just... totally. No, I mean, I get what you're saying because you know it's it's pretty hard to look yeah. at him now and see him as a positive thing in he made in the mockery. UFO world. You know, he he made a little bit of a mockery of the entire genre, man. He did. Yeah. I don't care what anybody yeah. says. And I will so, argue some that. of the messages he was putting out were just, I mean, right. they were so, I mean, they were just, they were, uh, they were just, they were not welcomed. No, exactly. So, you know, but anytime he speaks, I'm telling you, man, it is like fingers on a chalkboard for me. Yeah. You know, it, it's hard because I, I totally get what you're saying. And, um, and I think a lot of people agree with you. And sometimes I feel the same way. Um, at the same time, I empathize with someone who, you know, um, you know, at some level, he had it all, and he and he kind of blew it, and it was out of ignorance. But he still did, and you know, I can I I don't know if I was him, I would have a really hard time walking away from something I cared about as much as he seems to. No, and I and I totally understand that. I I totally get that. I just wish that he would would stop and think a little bit, stop and think a little bit, and it just doesn't seem like he knows how. I wish yeah, he well, would. you know, if he was if he was an actor, what would happen is he'd disappear for a couple of years, and then he'd come back reinventing himself in some minor role and and try to rebuild his credibility. And I I don't know how you'd do that in his world. I really don't know either. I really do not know. All right, let's move on to topic number two tonight, Stetson John, and that is Demi Lovato. The new television show where she's going to go out after sitting three times with Dr. Stephen Greer, she's going to go play aliens now. Yes, and uh, and and this is actually uh, the article that I'm I'm including in in the notes is actually you know um, not just about the TV show. It also talks a bit about about her fascination and how she got into it. But what I want to offer is I want to offer the audience a, a slightly different angle on this. Okay, so um, so I have a daughter. Okay. And my daughter uh, loves JoJo, okay? And I don't know how many of you are familiar with JoJo, but JoJo is a, 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 a singer-performer that kind of made her name in the YouTube world. And she's um, she wears a bow in her hair, and she's very out there. She actually seems like a really cool person. I've never met her. And, uh, and my daughter just thinks she walks on water. And... Uh, the other day, JoJo did a one-on-one, um, -on -one, like a co-interview with Demi Lovato. Okay, and uh, most of the interview was talking about all sorts of stuff. But two minutes into the interview, JoJo busts out with, "And I can't believe you went UFO hunting and didn't tell me." And Demi Lovato was like, "What? You would have wanted to go?" And she's like, "Absolutely, I totally want to go. I really want to see this." And she's like. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you. You totally could have come. Next time I go, I'll, I'll let you know. And then they moved on to their top. I was like, I can't believe that this happened, <laughs> right? I mean, it totally blew my mind. Like, like that, that that conversation just just popped out of nowhere. And to me, it illustrated why there is value in someone like Demi Lovato getting involved, right? Because she crosses bridges. She introduces new audiences. She helps introduce completely different people that wouldn't find it on their own to this topic. And in the end of it, this is this topic belongs to everybody. And it's important that everyone gets some level of education on it. And so I just, you know, I want to just offer a different perspective because I think there is some value in what she's doing. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm necessarily going to, you know, get all excited and sit down with popcorn and show. I'm not trying to have judgment, good or bad, on, on what she's doing. But I think her presence um, can have a very positive impact if, if, if she does it right. And I agree with you on that. She is going to attract with her YouTube followers, with her Twitter followers, Instagram followers. She is going to attract a lot of people to this. You know, I just wish that she had more time to research and not just following the indoctrination of Dr. Stephen Greer, who, in my opinion, is questionable at best. At best. I, I, I agree. I agree. And let's be honest. Like, I mean, I, I know some people. I should I should post some pictures sometimes. I know some people who see these um, these lighted objects in the sky, right? And some of them are astounding. Like, I mean, I've seen some pictures that just blow my mind. I mean, beautiful, just beautiful, beautiful pictures. But here's the thing. We actually don't really know 
if that has anything to do with Tic Tacs. We don't really know if that has anything to do with Gimbal. We don't really know if that has anything to do with anything. Like th there are so many weird things going on that that we that we have to at least consider that they all might be connected, but we don't know for sure. And so it's very possible that she's only being exposed to this very very sliver of of the whole scenario, and has no idea about the rest. And you know that's the same indoctrination a lot of people are going to go through. And so if the audience can go through that indoctrination with her, I that would like has to, value as well. You know what question I want to ask her? If I could ask her any question, did she pay for Dr. Stephen Greer's CE5 courses? That is a question because here's the thing. Greer has no problem charging a couple thousand dollars for these events. All right. And I know when I tried to get him on this show a couple of years ago, one of the first questions that he sent me in a long diatribe was, how much do I get paid to do the interview? And I said, zero. I have never paid for an interview. And I've interviewed millionaires and billionaires way more popular than you. So yeah. my question is, Demi Lovato being a very rich, successful young entrepreneur, did she pay for this course? Or did Greer look at this and say, well, she's got, well, let's take a look here. Let's go to Instagram. If I was Greer, I would have not charged her and I would have billed the cost of her not of her not paying to my marketing department and said, this, you're, you're paying for advertising. Congratulations. Hey, Demi Lovato has 114 million subscribers on Instagram. On Twitter, wow. on Twitter, Let's see if we can find her here on Twitter. Okay. On Twitter, she has 54.6 million followers. Okay. So if you add that up, that's 160, 170 million people. And I'm sure there's a lot of double ups there. Sure. Okay. But I'm still, sure there is. The reach. But the reach is incredible. And I would love for her to tell us, the public, who Stephen Greer is charging thousands of dollars to for his UFO courses and his alien courses. Did Demi Lovato pay for that? Or did he did he uh, do what he did with when he was interviewed on the Logan Paul podcast and do it for free because of the numbers? Or, or you know, yeah, and it could have been it could have been the gift. I mean, honestly, like between like just my personal opinion, I would be shocked if he charged her. Like it would be incredibly well, of course um, ill-advised, you know, of course it would did. be incredibly ill-advised. Yeah. No, there, no, 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 no. Look, everybody is equal, but there are certain people who are more equal than others. Absolutely agreed. Okay. <laughs> absolutely agreed. All right. Take absolutely that from agreed. the animal farm. Oh, ab I, no, absolutely I, agree. I don't think she paid, but I think that's, no, a no. I think it's a legitimate question to ask because the follow-up is saying you can afford this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, there, yeah. there are people who have had major experiences who are, who are saving up an entire savings to take Dr. Greer's course. Do you think that's fair? All yeah, right. I know. I know. Not, it's rotten. Yeah. I mean, I would love to interview Demi Lovato. I think, I think, you know, the generations that she can get involved if her show is successful. Okay. I think it's good for ufology to get the people involved. Do uh, what I you. I would love to have seen her. Let me have the final word on this. Yeah. I would love to have seen her, you know, go to a few UFO conferences. Okay. Go attend, go attend some conferences, go hear a lot of the people speak, whether it's Richard Dolan or Grant Cameron or Melinda Leslie or, or watch some Stanton Friedman films. Okay. Let, do that. Get yourself in Dr. Day. And maybe she already did. We don't know. We don't know. Her publicists have her so heavily covered, she'll never do a show like this or even uh, you know, a show like Coast to Coast AM. She'll never do it. No, guaranteed. Too, too rich. Way too rich in the woo. Okay? they. So either way, we got one more thing we need to talk about before we have to say goodnight to you, and we are really running out of time here, and that yeah. is information versus doxing because Alex Dietrich, the former 
Navy fighter pilot who chased down a Tic Tac. She had a, a little bit of a, uh, a call out today on Anjali, the ET contactee on Twitter. Yes. And, and, and I want to, I, and I don't know if Alex ever watches the show, but I want to say just personally, I think Alex handled that beautifully. I think she handled it the exact right way. And, you know, and basically what happened was, was that Alex was, was involved in a thread on Twitter where they were, she was trying to, she was, she was trying to get up to speed with the whole, uh, with the whole situation. She, she was not aware of what's going on and she was asking a ton of questions and she referenced this, um, this, uh, timeline that, um, th that I sent you and that I'll post later. And it covers a lot of deep information about it. And, um, and she was accused of, um, looking for information and sharing information on Twitter that could result in not necessarily, uh, uh leaving docs, but her, um, the contractor that, that helped her and, and some other people. And, and Alex stepped up and said, no, look, I, I, that's not my intention. I I've been subject to that myself. That's the last thing I want to do. I was just trying to get information. And it, to me, it drew, it drew to my attention, something that we all have to be very cognizant of. And that is that we, we cannot want information so badly that we put the personal lives of people and the personal family lives of these people at risk. When you're publishing information, be smart about it. You know, if you can, if you, if cutting out a name, part of a name can help provide a little bit of, of, of anonymity for these people, do what you would want others to do. You know, we got to be careful with this because this information can really hurt people, but it's Absolutely. important information to share. All right, John, thank you for another great edition of the Unbiased UFO Report. We'll see you in the after show in a few minutes on our YouTube channel. Let's get to the news.